Alright, so let's move on to, well, Pokemon Omega Red, Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. Can I start this one? Are we, are we having this another Gen 1 remake? Oh god, that's uh, what I was thinking of, but I kind of hope we don't. Gen 1 does not need another remake. Yeah. Alright, yeah, all right, Steven, since you're so eager, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I know a lot of people, like, now they love Ruby and Sapphire, but back then there was, they were all like, uh, this is like not bad, but uh, and I admit I'm kind of one still that it's like Ruby and Sapphire were good and all, but they weren't the best. But when Emerald came around, I felt it fixed every single thing that Ruby and Sapphire hadn't quite nailed yet. Yeah. And if the other remakes of Pokemon are anything to go by, the good elements of Emerald are going to be blended into both of these games, kind of like you know, and hard homes. So, so. And I have to agree with him. Also. The new Megas that they've shown so far, and the new Primal forms... Oh, oh yeah, those were big awesome. Those are awesome. Yeah. Are they related to Primal Dialga in any way, shape, or form? No, <laughs> no, no idea. I, I doubt it, because if you recall, Primal Dialga was formed through an amount of anger. It wasn't really time-traveling back to his more vicious form. It that would be, be cool to see it. Like, it would be cool to hold it. Like a little event, you get Primal Dialga. That would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Either. <laughs> and, maybe, and, maybe, and maybe we'll see a Primal Palkia at some point as well. Yeah, who knows? Okay, no. but... Alright, but anyway, but, but... Back on topic. Overall, it looks like they're not only taking the best of Ruby and Sapphire and adding in Emerald, but they're also taking the best that X and Y had. By the way, I will instant buy immediately if they retain Pokemon in me. That needs to stay. No, yes, but yes. Yes. I can agree. In fact, they but, need it. In fact, I would be even more impressed if they could even improve on it. Oh, yes. That would be actually oh, very interesting. Actually, before we do, there's another little thing I would like to talk about. What's now, that? as we've all seen, there are a lot of Megas have been shown as the two new Mega Starters and Mega Sable. Yeah, yeah. But and Mega Deancey. Mega Deancey. Yeah, Mega Deancey as well. But this also goes to what <laughs> DMAW was talking about um, a couple of days ago. How, if you didn't notice, on Archie and oh, Max yeah. here, they yes. have Mega Stones. So it, glasses, uh, so it might be possible. So it might be possible there's going to be a Mega Camerupt and a Mega Sharpedo. Uh, so those, are those two mains. And I can I'd say that in another chat. So it's going to be so tanky looking. <laughs> yeah, I have to say this though that I am so looking forward to this. See, this is when I actually really got into Pokemon, and that was during Ruby and Sapphire. In fact, you want to know something, guys? I still have my Blaze again from the original Ruby and Sapphire. He's been with me in almost every single generation. I am not kidding. Nice. And he's going, going back home. That is, some, <laughs> that is some dedication. I'm sorry, but I don't. I, be. My partner Firebird. That's what I named my Blaze again first. Um, my partner has just been with me through a lot, and and he's the only level 100 I have actually. Ten oh. years later, he's going back home. But, but what about you guys? Have you kept any of your partners through Ruby and Sapphire? Um, Sadly, of course. No, I've no, tried no. to. I've it, 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 I, I would have, but I, at one point I regrettably lost my copy of Pokemon Diamond. I had oh. a Tyranitar that I got in uh, Pokemon XD, I think it was, and he flew around everywhere. He went to Emerald, he went to Leaf Green, he went to Coliseum, he then went to uh, Pearl version. Thing was, I had a bit of a problem in Pearl in which the game save got corrupted and deleted, and after all that and all that, that was basically what got me to trade in Pearl that I didn't want to, I felt bad that I lost him, it was, you know, it felt like he was uh, gone and it's just not the same. With right. me, I, I, I regret to say that I have my Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald transferred all the way up to today, but the main thing was, every time I did transfer into the next game, while I'm playing that game, I forget that he's still in there. <laughs> and also, sadly, I could not get any of my Pokemon from there because, due to money crisis, I was forced to sell them. Oh, uh, what about you, CJ? Uh, are we talking about in terms of the Pokemon that we've had back then, or yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's like if you have any Pokemon from Ruby, Sapphire, Fire, and Leaf Green, if you still have them up to this generation. Oh yeah, I still have them, but I don't use them because I go for the whole EV egg breeding thing. Uh, I, I don't have the patience for that. Neither do I. Super training got me some extra patience, but it's my me. my what I have gets me almost instant perfect Pokemon, and it's not cheating at all. What's that? True, it is. It's it. because I got a Japanese Ditto that apparently I think that guy cheated, 
because this thing is outstanding potential with all six IV. Yep. Ah, but also, guys, I forgot to mention, uh, and Stephen Braxton brought this up. I also have my Guard of War from XD, and she's also been with me ever since. Yeah. Uh, before and, we drag this on too long, I'd say we should get to yes, the... Yes, 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 sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. If it's all right, I'm sorry uh, about the emotion. Before we go too far down the cells of road. Actually, sorry, there's one little thing I need... Uh, there's one little thing I would like to bring up. About it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, actually, it's... I had, like, this little tiny story of what happened right before these games were announced. The oh, remakes. okay, we gotta go you ahead have, and see. Okay, uh, before I did the, uh, Smash Chat for the Metroid, Zelda, and, uh, Donkey Kong games... I was talking with Brawlmaster, and I wanted to, like, give him a little warning. I just, for whatever reason, came to the top of my head. Because he's such a huge supporter of getting Mewtwo back, I said just, like, something to, for him to be conscious about. I was like, the only thing that could hurt Mewtwo's chances of getting back is if there's a Ruby Sapphire remake. And the very <laughs> next morning, <laughs> the very <laughs> next morning, yikes. Oh, God. Oh. All right, so well, then no. I'll finish what you were going to say, and then we'll get to the ratings. All right, um, I don't know about you, just for me, my only complaint is Mega Sableye. I don't know, it, it just didn't look too much creativity into that Mega Evolution. Yeah, I'm a bit more like he's behind got that big, he got that big jewel, and he's using it as a shield, and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it is so that it's hard. hard. Especially when you consider how Sableyes are very greedy when it comes to jewels. I mean, they yeah. have diamonds for eyes. They have, yeah, so they're pretty much, well. they're pretty much, my precious. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so, the game AW started us off, he'll, he'll be the first one to give the opinion instead of me. Five out of five, day one purchase, and you know what, seven to a ten out of five, if you really love Ruby's Sapphire, get this immediately, if you love Pokemon, definitely get it worth it, I know I will. Before we go on one more thing, Bit of a personal thing. I take a bit of pride in the fact that I share the same name and spelling as the champion of the game. Great. You Me and Games have been dealing with that ever since we met. Okay, so anyway, champion Steven, <laughs> since you started us off, you get to pick on who goes next and sharing their opinion and rating. Uh, let's go, CJ. Uh, yep. Yeah, basically the same boat. Five out of five. I love the third generation. I can't wait to see what we get here. I, I'm really expecting some big new surprises. Uh, not that big on Mega Pokemon, but I am curious to see what new ones we get. I love the fact that Mega Sceptile is a grass dragon. But of course it makes one weakness twice as powerful. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Which Swampert can use? Alright, uh, Steven, so who goes next sharing their opinion and rating? Let's go Adam. I have high hopes for these remakes, but... Not quite as big as the, as the other as CJ and Steven. I'm gonna say a four out of five. All right, Steven, who goes next? You stink. All right. <clears throat> okay, for me, like I said before, I loved Ruby and Sapphire. This is what really got me into the craze of Pokemon. And I would say five out of five. I am getting this day one. Nothing is gonna stop me. And just so you know. I'm actually not going to grab Blaziken, even though he's probably my favorite Pokemon. I'm still going to hang on to my Firebird and transfer him in as soon as I can! <laughs> and I'm actually going to try out one of the other starters for once. Alright. Nintendo Saga fan? Alright. Pretty much. 5 out of 5. Same as most people. I am just happy that they got the two, um, my most favorite generation out of all the generations, because... Well, it's the one I started out with. Like they, they pretty much got me into Pokemon, um, because back then I didn't, I couldn't afford a Game Boy. And also, I got, I got Sapphire out of a deal for one buck. What? Seriously? What? Damn! Damn! Dang. You are lucky. Yeah. I got a deal out of it, Sapphire, for one buck. I was sold. You're doing right. You got a deal what? out of it. Alright, <laughs> 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 okay, alright. Okay. So. Yeah, no, and last week, just like everyone else, 5 out of 5, even though I did start with Gen 2, and I really got into it, just like with every other remake, I've been extremely impressed with what they've done, and I cannot wait for this. Definitely a day one buy, though I do hope for one thing when you're traveling. What's that? 
do what Heart Gold is so silver, then electric Pokemon travel behind you. Yes! That's yes! Awesome. Uh, yes! Unfortunately, we've seen gameplay footage, so I don't think that's gonna happen. Even if it doesn't happen, it's not gonna, it's not gonna lower my, my standards. Okay. Alright, so, ba so basically, um, Adam's the only one that was not 5 out of 5, but it was still 4, so... I'm not gonna give him a hard time. Outsider! <laughs> before, before, we, before we leave off the game, there's just one last thing I want to say that is perfectly fitting right now. What's that? Cohen oh, Remix confirmed. Of course. <laughs> wait, wait, guys, guys. <laughs> well, wait, 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 guys. Maybe it can work for another spin-off. Pokemon Snap Remake confirmed. No, not a, no, not a remake. Sequel. Yeah. Sequel? Oh, yeah. Sequel. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, well, there's so many other Pokemon now. So, yeah. Okay, you so think it wouldn't I don't be that think hard that. to do it. I, I don't understand that. Make it a digital download. And... 3DS, and if they use the augmented reality, you can take pictures of the Pokemon with you or your family or wherever, or your friends. That's good. Okay, well, okay, okay. We're, we're really getting off topic, and this okay. has already dragged on for a while. You can start it? off the next one. Uh, just... Actually, actually, the next one is Bayonetta. Oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna sit this one out a bit. Yeah, cuz, you know, I really want to do this. Bayonetta 2, I have been so looking forward to this! I am not kidding, I love the first Bayonetta, in fact, I basically played the crap out of it, and I'm happy to say I actually beat it, but I'm just gonna say this right now, the fact that they're actually bundling the first one with new costumes, I would happily play the first one again before I play the second one. But seriously though, Bayonetta, I just, I just love this woman because, well, I don't care what anyone else says, she may act a little fan service but I just say she's just a woman who knows how to have a good time. But anyway, I, okay, when the developers showed off uh, Bayonetta 2, especially that big boss fight of one of the demons getting loose, uh, spoilers by the way, um, I was so hooked because it's like, oh god, this is gonna be... Ten times as epic as the first Bayonetta, and then past the, just past that, I I really want to get this game, and just the fact that it's even bigger, I'm just gonna uh, love the hell out of this. And uh, like I said, I am gonna be replaying the first one again because of alternate costumes, and just I want to see what else they added to it. Oh, and, and also, and speak if I could. I love the redesign of her with short hair. Oh yes, yes I. Oh yeah. yeah. To me, oh. she actually looks more beautiful than with than with the long hair. Yeah, I have to agree. Oh, and by the way, for any haters who hate the fact that she has short hair, the developer said that she can make her hair at any length she wants. So you have no right to complain. But, oh, yeah. Bayonetta does what she wants. She always will. Oh, and by the way, um, she lo actually looks more powerful in the way her suit looks. Okay. And now to the rating. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I kinda went on a fanboy rage there. No, 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 don't be, don't be. We, we kinda went on a fanboy rage oh, wait. Pokemon. You don't we, have, you don't have to think. Yeah, but we didn't get to say anything about it. Like, really? Okay, yeah, before we go to the ratings, what is what do the rest of you have to say about it? This looks really good, uh, uh, it? It's It just looks flat out epic. I wanna play it, not even on release date now, I wanna play it. <laughs> It just looks amazing. It, it, and just like what Austin said earlier, the short hair looks really good, beautiful there. And everything about this just seems awesome. And I like how even though they announced this before the Wii was even out, it's still in development. It means they're taking their time. And I love that Bayonetta 1's included in it because I never got to play the original Bayonetta 1. No matter how awesome this was, if it wasn't without that there, I wouldn't have been able to really make sense of it, so I wouldn't have wanted to get it. They took care of that, and I, wouldn't, I was not expecting that, so this one's really looking good. Oh yeah, it is. Agreed. For me, same, as the, same opinion as um, Steven, pretty much. <laughs> uh, just visually, damn. The graphics, damn. The gameplay, damn. <laughs> Jeez. Calm down, boy. Well, what do you have to say about it, DJ? Uh, like I said a little earlier, uh, the whole thing is that, yeah, I admit the game looks good. I hope it does well. But for personal reasons, I won't be picking it up. I do well, like the idea that they are bundling it with the first game. That is a brilliant move. It's just personal issues that are going to keep me from playing it. What's that? Religious reason. Oh. Uh, oh. That religious. Uh, yeah. Okay. I got it. I'm confused. No, of just, course no, you are. We're not crying further onto it. We're, we're yeah. just 
Yeah, yeah, just give it at that and move on. Like I said, I hope it does well. So it's not like I'm condemning it. I'm just saying I'm not going to be involved with this. I have to applaud you, though. I really have to applaud you because the first person I've ever heard in the face of the planet have a religious reason for, you know, not wanting to get into a game, but at the same time not condemning the game itself or its creators. We need more people like that. Yeah, well... Oh well, yeah, I do kind of feel bad that I'm beating up angels, but I just see them as more evil angels because oh. it's like you should see the things that they do, CJ. They are evil angels. They're probably fallen yeah. angels or disguised. Yeah, it's but just something I'm not gonna get involved in. I'm sorry. sorry. All right, well, I think it's time we get to the ratings. Okay, right. for me, five out of five. Day one buy, no question about it. I just love this game, and I am gonna play the first one. Five out of five. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and I'm CJ already basically said does your out of five. Yeah, just leave me as like no rating, just because, like I've said. I, it's... And for me, I have to say four out of five. It definitely looks good, but I'm gonna wait to see what's going on with it more. It's one of those games that I can be patient about. All right. Well, Adam, let's hear your opinion. Well, this looks like a game I'm gonna be interested in. I'd say a four out of five for me. The game looks fluid, the game, the combat looks awesome. Yep, and are you going to be playing the first one again? Quite possibly. Alright, um, you know what, let's have Nintendo Saga Fan go next. No problem. So, yeah, visually, pretty much everything, the fighting, the, the graphics, just damn. I'm impressed on how awesome it looks. Definitely getting the first game with the bundle. So yeah, 5 out of 5, day 1. Alright, and lastly, Game AW. 5 out of 5. Day one purchase, I'm going to start with the first one, I'm going to play through it all, and then go to the second one. And a uh, Nintendo Saga fan mentioned something earlier that I can't believe it wasn't mentioned, I forgot. Everyone says, oh, we use graphics are inferior, or we use 4 and you know, they're behind. Spain 2 is my response, I say, eat your heart out. Yes! Um, well, not even just that, I mean, look at, look at the graphics on Mario Kart 8. Zelda yeah. U is my reason. Oh, Zelda you! Oh my that god. That too. Anyway. They both are very perfect. Oh yeah, but before we close it out, I do have one last thing to say. I really, really don't want to hear people complain about the touch controls. Oh my god. <sighs> oh, we never mentioned that though. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's Nintendo 1 and 2 are getting touch, with touch controls, but the thing is, is that you don't have to commit to them. They actually showed that it was seamless, that you could either use touch controls or the buttons. So you know what? Don't hate on people who use the touch controls. It's not going to affect you in any way. So if people want to use the touch controls, let up. It's, if you don't want to, then fine. Personally, since you brought it up, it's actually worth discussing a bit into. I'm not condemning them, but I'm a little concerned about the touch controls because it makes it easier to do combos and whatnot, and it helps your casual people. But here's the thing. Bayonetta is not exactly a casual game. You don't play it to you know, relax or you know, just kick back. I agree that... If you don't like it, don't use it, and, you know, I'm totally for that. But at the same time, it's like, it's like if you added battling to Animal Crossing or, you know, stuff like that. It's like, this isn't the kind of game for it, is my opinion. So, I mean, they were seamless, but it might be a little too seamless, because then you can just kind of touch the enemy to win a game, and, you know, I just worry it might make it too easy in a game that could otherwise be awesome. But, as Snake said, if you don't like it, don't use it. If you like it, use it. I'm just concerned about it is all. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next one, and it's another really charming artistic game, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Ooh, yes. Was oh, anybody oh, else oh. thinking at first I that love, this was a I DS remake Curse. on the Wii U? Well, I swear it's, that's what it was. Just, I figured direct sequel to Canvas Curse. Same. I'm with Adam on that one, especially when I noticed which I love so much is the art style change. They went from the usual Kirby norm appearance to Claymation. Of all things. Actually, Kirby yes. Canvas Curse was more pastel-like. Yeah, but uh, still. But I loved Canvas Curse. I played through that like so many times. I beat it with Kirby, I beat it with DDD, I beat it with Meta Knight, I beat it with Battle <laughs> D, and I beat it with Battle Do. And let me tell you, I could play it again and again, and to see that they're making a sequel to Kirby's Cameras Curse is something that really just had me go, Yes! Oh man, I can't wait to play more of that game. I hope they bring back the ball versions of the other characters. And I love the general charm of it that it looks like it's going to 
take everything that Candice Curse had and made it bigger and better. It was it was a and charming game, and it looks like this is trying to amplify that. Yeah. With Play-Doh. Yeah, but the look of the game, though, it's like, it really looks like they're, they're trying to experiment new things, and Kirby is like, the proving ground or something. What I mean by that is like art style, basically. It's like it just seems lately that they're using Kirby as a proving ground to try out new graphics or me or new art style or whatever. Well, Kirby, I believe he's he's just very flexible on many type of game type genres. Well, yeah, you're and styles. <laughs> oh, well, CJ, yeah, yeah. Adam, what do you have to say about it? It seems a bit more fast paced than most Kirby games. Like most Kirby games, you pretty pretty much go at your own pace, but in this one, you have to build momentum. Uh, well, what about you, CJ? Canvas Curse was the first Kirby game I ever played. So, really? What? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't, uh, don't look at me like that. Yeah, I got into Kirby nope, pretty late. No comments. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it. I am looking forward to this one. It's, and I think it's great how it makes good use of the gamepad and the touchscreen again. Uh, like I said, though, I, had, I initially thought that we, this was just going to be the DS version on the Wii U as a remake. But no, it's a com it's a sequel that caught me completely off guard. Yeah, and if you think about it, TJ, it's basically for you. It's like you've come full circle. Yep, I'm, all, I'm back where <laughs> I started. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as we saw in the gameplay footage, you will have to fight with the woods. Uh, I think they're talking about like the process of beating him. Like when Kirby launched at him, like caved his face in, like an old cartoon. Yeah, well, it's like, he is made of... Or Wispy's lately getting a lot of abuse. <laughs> yeah, Wispy, Wispy can never catch a break. The only yeah. time it was actually a little tough was in Kirby's yeah. Avalanche, and that was a puzzle game. Hmm. No, if he didn't know what you were doing, he was kind of tough in Dreamland 3, and again, if he didn't know what you were doing, he was really tough in Return to Dreamland, because you wouldn't expect him to do some of the things he did, and he could catch you off guard, but, you know, he still doesn't catch a break. <laughs> Yeah, no, he does not catch a break. But anyway, we really, really need to stop dragging these ones out. I was actually going to say that as well. Yes, yes, I am going to have to edit some of this. Well, when you consider that you have six people in here, fan guys going to go for Nintendo. Well, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. Still be long. true. Hey, CJ? Yep? I am starting to feel your pain. <laughs> not yet, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> this is only the beginning, buddy. Exactly. And I expect this particular topic to make it in the video itself. <laughs> okay, anyway, so let's go to the ratings. Me, personally, I just love this art style. I just love the fact that they are trying another new art style with Kirby. So I'm really looking forward to this. But considering purchase, I'd say about the 3 out of 5. Might I'm probably not going to get it for uh, day 1. But I am going to get this one eventually. Alright, since CJ is basically coming full circle, he'll go first again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where I might land on that list. I'm probably between the three and the four. I did like Canvas Curse, but at the same time, there might be some other games coming out around that time. I'm not sure how much I can afford at the moment. But if I see it for a good price, I see a lot more good things about it, I'm probably going to pick it up. Oh, yeah. Just, just... Up next is you, Quarter Guy. For me, it's a four out of five. We'll likely buy, I'm not sure if day one. Okay, so... Up next is um, the Western Echidna. I gotta go with 3.5 out of 5. Mainly because I love Kirby. It's one of my favorite Nintendo franchises. Always had fun. But I don't know if the Canvas Curse playstyle is going to work for me. I might give it a shot, though I don't know what to say about it. And it's definitely not going to be a day one buy for me, so yeah. Game AW, your turn. As someone who loved Canvas Curse and played it to death, Okay, I'm still alive, but, you know, I just got a one-up. As a person who loves Kirby as his favorite Nintendo character, I'd say this is day one, but 4.5 out of 5. Canvas Curse wasn't the best of the Kirby games, but it was still very fun, and it may be hit or miss for some, but for me, I'm biased pretty heavily towards it, so 4.5 out of 5 is my ultimate rating. Alright, well, lastly, Nintendo Saga fan. For me, yeah, 4.5 out of 5. Looks like another great adventure for Kirby. Looks, uh, looks like a ton of fun, and I just hope that you'll be able to play as not just the, the Waddle Dee or Meta Knight, maybe make a new character, like they did with uh, Prince, uh, Prince, Prince Fluff. 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 Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep, and what was your reading? 4.5 out of 5. Alright. Okay, so you know what? Let's go on to the next one. 
Um, let's see. According to the digital event, the next one they went into is... Ah, Mario Maker. Yes. Uh, uh, or as I like to refer to it, Nintendo's nod to the ROM hacking community. <laughs> oh, no, it's no, so no, 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 no. I can tell this game is going to be on two sides. One side, there's going to be the extremely creative levels. On the other hand, there's the trolls who try to make it the impossible. Like you know what? And then there's the worst ones, the ones that are going to make it, for lack of a more appropriate term, obscene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Oh. Uh, you know what, though? You mentioned the really difficult, like the, I guess, Kaizo-type levels. Well, you know what? You can troll them back by just kind of pausing midway and moving Mario past the difficult part. Okay, continue. There, I beat it. Easiest mm. level ever. Well, also, I do have to say something about what I saw in the treehouse. I like the fact that they basically had all these different levels all set up, especially, like, one of the main guys that were designing it. He had all these levels that he made, and he basically challenged them to try to clear them, and... Yeah, I like how in-depth they went, including the jump tracker. That is yes. really gonna help. That is that basically is gonna, gonna be a, a godsend. Yeah, I that's, just you just have the word right on my mouth. I just had an idea of something that could be fun that players could do with the game. I know I'm gonna do it with some of my friends. We could, one of us could create a level, and then another one of us tries to beat it. When we beat it, we then try to add into that level. Like, we don't remove anything from the level, but we try to add something in and pass it to someone else to beat it, and the cycle goes on until we make, like, this really hard level that yeah. almost can't be beaten. See how long we can get the chain going. Yeah, but for me, I, I really do like this, though, and I've always been a huge Mario fan, and I'm sure you guys can attest to that. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I just have a feeling that this is just going to be a lot of fun. But I'm going on to the ratings right now, and right oh, now... before you do this, uh, there's oh. something else we forgot to mention. What's that? The ability to switch the graphics from NES to New Super Mario Bros. U. Oh, oh right, yes. right, right. And it I says that there's going to be other different graphical styles. Seriously? So maybe Super really? Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario oh, World. Yeah. Oh, yes! Oh, if they my have God. Mario World... Okay, it's yes, a... I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. If they it's... have Mario World... Even I'm though sold. it's only a rumor, it has been said that they are going to try different art graphical it... styles as well. Some that are even non-Mario. Whoa, that's... Again, that I'm sounds sold. interesting. But still, but the fact that you can switch between the original Super Mario Brothers and new Super Mario Brothers U... Oh, man, that is a stroke of genius right there. Oh, yeah. I agree. Uh, and also, I like I could just abuse any of the enemies. Yeah, like the fact that they either sweat or shake, or the fact that you could switch a green turtle to a red turtle just by shaking it, or... That just sounds handy. Oh, yeah, and I also like the fact that you can actually put wings on anything, including piranha plants. You couldn't do that before. No, I yeah. don't think that's like a new Piranha plant. plants with wings. Oh, Hair on a plant. All right, <laughs> no, it's all right. Before, we, before we go on, let's Hammer Brothers rating. with wings. Yeah, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to switch it up a bit, and I'll save my opinion for last. So, I'm going to start off with um, Game AW. I'm kind of on the fence between 4.5 to 5. This is definitely something I would really love to get, and I love the graphical styles. The only reason I'm, it's on the scale there is it's only a rumor of the graphical styles. If it's true, then Instant 5, buy it now. If yes. not, I'll still buy it, but uh, it kind of drops 0.5 points. Mainly because, just like with Camus Curse, I'm biased towards Mario World because that was the first video game I've ever played in my life. So if they can add that graphical style, that's enough to win me over instantly. All right, let's go with, uh, you know what? Let's go with Nintendo Saga fan and let him go second. Oh my god, if the rumors are true, you can go to the graphics of Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 3 and any other kind from past generations of Mario, Instant 5, Day Zero, I'm getting it. <laughs> Dang. Oh, god. It just seems so much fun and I'm gonna have a ton of fun making extremely hard levels. <laughs> okay, so... And now, um... CJ, let's hear from you. It's not a traditional Mario platformer! It's not a traditional Mario platformer! It's not a traditional <laughs> Mario platformer! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been Mario'd out for a while, so I'm just glad to see it's not a traditional Mario platformer! It's, it's now as hard as I make it, so that raises my interest in it a lot. I still want to know a little bit more about it, such as can you share with other friends online? I want to know what other styles, I want to know what other kind of traps and hazards, other kind of little power-ups you can put in. 
I want to know all this stuff. I yeah. am looking forward to this. I think it is a great idea. Not exactly sure where I stand right now. Probably between the four and the five. Good call, Nintendo, because honestly, I really don't want to see another Mario platformer for like three years. I think we have enough, but I like this idea. I am looking forward to it. That's just me, though. All right, let's have Austin go next. I have to say I'm on the scale of four. It's an amazing idea. I cannot wait to see what type of levels people come up with, as long as they're not complete trolls about it. Yeah. But the thing is, I can actually come up with some creative ideas. It's just putting it on paper, like putting it in action, is hard for me to do. Actually creating them is going to be the hassle for me. And there are times where I end up getting pissed at the game. So for me, it's four. All right, four. Same for me, four. I love the idea, but I'm just wondering what people will do with their levels. I'm hoping to see less of the uh, lewd ones and more of the ones that are genuinely creative. Yeah, okay. This one, it's going to be a three out of five for me. I hate to be the negative Nilly here, but I do admit that CJ, yeah, you're right. It's not a traditional Mario platformer, but my thing is, is that sometimes my creative juices just don't come out. And my thing is, is that I actually do love Mario platformers. I basically try to get anyone I can. I'm not kidding. I love Mario that much. I am going to enjoy making my own levels and try to create ones that are fair, but you can't breeze through them. But for me, yeah, it's going to be a 3 out of 5. There's probably a really good chance that I'm not going to get it day one, but I'm probably going to get it eventually. <laughs> bah, whew, man, we are going on for a while. Sorry about that, everyone. Yeah, we're going to have to turbo through these next ones, and that's a shame, because these are the best ones we've got coming up. Let's at least speed through what we at least think of Project Car and Project Car. We'll just not talk about them at length and we'll just give our opinions on them one at a time. For me, both projects look like they have a lot of potential, but I know that they're in their beta, but they're going to have to do a lot more to impress me because Project Giant Robots, it looks like it would be more frustrating than fun. It's like, I love you Shigeru Miyamoto, but you're going to have to do a little more to impress me. CJ? Uh, I honestly didn't even pay attention to those games. Well, that was fast. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess Adam? Yeah, the concepts are interesting, but whether they evolve to be good games remains to be seen. Yeah, uh... Yeah, I'm kind of on the same boat with Adam, though they both look like a lot of fun. Like, I love the physics weight system with Giant Robot, and the camera perspective minigame of Project Guard is really, really fun. From what they've shown, I'm actually a little bit impressed with the game. Yeah, uh, right. Nintendo? Alright, for me, Project Guard, I say it looks more fun than Giant Robots, personally for me, because I like challenges, and this does look like a challenge, and it has potential to have more things in it, and so I'm hoping that they'll make good of it, not just keep it at that point. Okay, Game AW, your last, what's your opinion? I like the physics of Giant Robot, as I think Austin said. I like the multi-camera thing in Project Guard, but I also like about Project Guard is that it's trying to get, you know, other people around you in the game. It kind of makes it that there's no limit to the players, because, you know, it's anyone who's watching and you work together. It also has potential for trolling, because someone can just say, Hey, look, there's a robot in 7. Oh, there's no robot in 7. Rob comes oh, in and kills the core. Good prom <laughs> yeah. Promising has potential. Too soon to tell. Yeah, too soon to tell. Yeah. All right, let's go real quickly over Fantasy Life and Codename Steam. Yeah, uh -huh. I gotta say, Fantasy Life, it has potential, but... It didn't really show what you can really do. Uh, what about you, CJ? Like I said, I didn't pay attention to either of these two games, so no opinion. Uh, yeah, okay, sorry. what about you, Adam? Oh, yeah. yeah. It didn't really interest me that much. Yeah, if I want to play a fantasy life, I'll play Mabinogi. I can see on the only one that's uh, definitely interested in this game. I haven't played a game like it, but I haven't played too many like PC games that aren't, you know, Honestly, I think I'd go for it, and it's definitely something that sounds more like my cup of tea, and it's definitely something interesting and new for me. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's definitely a buy at some point. Okay, last one before we start getting to the bigger ones. Go name Steam. So, for me, I have to say that, for one thing, I'm not really into strategy games or, you know, tactics, but this one might actually convince me to think otherwise, because it's not just a strategy game where it's like, oh, hey, you go here, and then you attack that guy. No, you actually have to really think about how you move and how you use up your steam in order to attack. So this one might actually be a buy for me at some point. For me, I'm a big strategy fan, especially when it came to games like Fire Emblem. Then again, what else would you expect from the guys who made Fire Emblem? It definitely looks good. I like the concept. Steampunk is definitely one of my, like, I'm a sucker for. And the, the character designs look really cool, especially the American. American! 
Fuck yeah! The designs were really good. I like how the cutscenes are done by comics. It's definitely a game that I'm definitely gonna look into more. Oh yeah. And what about you, CJ? I just feel like after the direct, I kind of zoned out on everything. I was just so physically and emotionally exhausted, I didn't even pay attention to Project D either. I mean, after the direct and after the Smash Invitational, I was just zoned out. I was zombie-like. I'm gonna have to look into it because we gotta support the new IPs, right? Oh, hell yeah. Nintendo Saga. Alright, for me, interesting way to play. It reminds me of a lot of a Fire Emblem. Because, well, you know already. And I'm not gonna get this immediately, but it is something uh, I might get. So I'll just give it a, a 3 out of 5. Alright, yeah. Oh. This actually looks pretty interesting. I'm usually not much for, for strategy games, but this one might be worth a look for me. Oh, yeah. And Steven? Well, as someone who loved Fire Emblem in general, I, I can trust intelligence as a to be in game. I love it, but. It's got a big shoes that will be in this. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. See, uh, CJ was the one recording our conversation because we thought his way was the most uh, stable. Or at least, that's what we thought. But for the first time since I've known him, for some reason, his internet cut out during the conversation, and we basically had to cut it here. Don't worry, though, don't worry. There's still plenty more to go over because we continued once he got back. But yeah, that's all for part two, and yeah. <clears throat> also, in case you're wondering why it took so long to get part two out, like another little over two weeks, it's because I had to cut down a lot of audio. Um, I had to cut down like a lot of uhs, ums, long pauses, stammers. Because it was 50 minutes long before I edited all this. And I had to go through the audio with a fine-toothed comb just to cut it down to a more reasonable video. So yeah, that's one of the reasons. And the other one is I'm not working on this like every single day. But hopefully part 3 and 4 won't take as long. I'm going to make sure I get those done a lot faster. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you in on what was taking so long, and yeah. <clears throat> anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed part two. This is Omega Snake signing out. See you in part three.